it's good and bad what happened today, in my opinion. I mean, it was it showed unity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And that's unity is always good. Hell yeah. You know, that you're not going to go just start some shit with one person. It's, it's unity, you know. <laughs> and at the same time, I hate to see when there's a race fight. Right, because bro. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to all come together. Right. You know, and it's, would, that, would that ever happen? Right. Well, Who sometimes knows? you do got to fuck some people up, yeah, too. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to teach them a lesson. Me, I do all my fights at nighttime. Turn the lights up and whoop all your ass. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's right. What the oh. fuck oh. is going on? <laughs> what is going on it's here? It's called shadow boxing, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> Big Boys Big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen, back in the neighborhood. Welcome back, Michael Blackson. You mother suckers. Hey, <laughs> hey man, we wait on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, do, do you find people, Mike, that can't wait for you to say my N-word or mother sucker? Yeah, or, and people throw it back at you. So, you know the crazy? My fans are the funniest, rudest people on earth. Yes, I'll man. be out in public. You know, I'll be with my kids. I don't care my kids. But hey, you black bitch, you ugly mother sucker. <laughs> and that's a compliment for them, man. I'm like, my kids like, what did you, I don't know, they just show me how much you love me. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, and that's like a term of endearment for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I love that black motherfucker black, so much. Black, ugly mother sucker. Hey, man, let me tell you what I do. I done got to a point, and we had this conversation before, Michael Blackson. I don't even like taking pictures with you. Because you'll put a picture up. Oh, they make a meme. And, and then they'll start jumping in on whoever you're on the picture with. Oh, yeah, my you can handle it. I can't. Yeah. yeah. 98.6% of my fans are going to hell. Right, I know yeah. That's what's like, man. <laughs> Their name is in the book. They know where to go. <laughs> right. Hey, man. And before comedy, like, we, we know Michael Blackson, man. And it's been, now it's been decades oh, yeah, that we can say that we've seen Michael Blackson, man. Before comedy, were you always, like, the guy that people knew, like, oh, he's funny? Oh, no. Right. I had to, I, it took me time to get, you know, to feel comfortable, mm-hmm. to be funny. I came to America, you know, kids made fun of me. Right. I was different. I was a little darker than everybody else, had an accent. You know, a lot of things I didn't know before I came to America. Believe mm. it or not, I didn't know I was dark skin until I got here. Yeah. It's not like mm. I was in Africa being a red bone. Right, 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 right. You're right. You went the light skin, brother. I just didn't know because back then, you know, now it's different now. You know, the, the Western world has pushed over there. But prior to that, Africa is like, you know, the Garden of Eden. We didn't know nothing. We just thought we were all the same. We all. I came to America. America is like the Garden of Eden after them niggas ate the apple. Right, yeah. After you, see the, you ate the apple, you see everything. Right. I'm hanging out with some kids. It's like I've just got here. I'm like 14 years old. I'm hanging out with some, you know, younger kids. They're like, they said, you black. I said, of course, we're all black. They said, no, nigga, you black as shit. Yeah. I know what you mean by that. And I'm like, you like under the bed. Right, fucker. yeah. That's dark. Right, yeah. <laughs> if you look under the bed lately, right, anybody? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's dark as hell, man. This one fucker told me that I look like I have no bright ideas. <laughs> <laughs> they told me I look like I smoke cigarette backwards. <laughs> they told me I was baptized on a skillet. <laughs> They told me. Hey what, man, what, what the, <laughs> man, it's like it's like I don't want to laugh, but I'm like, all right, go. They told me whenever they play pool, they'd be like Michael Blackson corner pocket. Oh, <laughs> wow, bro. Wow. I became the eight ball motherfucker. Wow. You know, so hey, it took man. a while for me to get comfortable. And you got to think now, man. Like you come here. When and you say you didn't see anything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like now with social media, we see all kind of different worlds now. But you didn't have that, so when you got here, it was like kind of not the rude awakening, but it was like, damn, yeah, things nah, are a little different. It was here. a lot of rude awakening. Okay, I didn't want to. Yeah, I kind of yeah. felt that. Nah, yeah. man, it was all good. It made me tough. Made me who I am. And when I finally got comfortable, when I finally understood American kids, which oh, took man. years, is when I started to. Come, come back to that's why I started becoming myself, becoming funny. Once hey man, I did realize you what it took come to, fit in. Mm-hmm. to America and were you darker than what you are now? Because Akon said mm-hmm. that he was darker, and then when he came here, he was like, you know, he was like, believe it or not, I lightened up. Yeah, I did. It's the weather, the right. cold weather, kind of like, and I'm very pissed because I, you know, don't get it wrong. When I first came. They made fun of me being so dark. It made me kind of insecure about mm. it. But as I got older, I embraced it and realized right. I'm a king. This melanin, this shit, Say you know, this, this ain't cheap darkness. Right. You know, the darker I feel, the richer I felt. And then now the weather, the cold weather, because I was raised in the East Coast, Philly. So the cold weather kind of like makes you a little lighter. Now I go back home and I see niggas darker than me. I'm jealous. Right, right. I'm yeah. like, don't ha- in America, they think I'm the blackest one. Don't hang around me, motherfucker. Yeah. You're that's gonna when fuck you, up my money. That, that's when you take uh you, you make sure you take uh pictures without like uh oh, yeah, no light. They be like, no, no, get the fucking filter out of here. Yeah. 
The darker I am, the more money I make, motherfucker. Do you make it back home a lot? What? You try to travel back a I lot. Go home every and you do beautiful other, things for the household. Every too. other month I'm in Ghana. Really? Because I built a school. Yeah, man. So I go there and I keep an eye on and make sure everything is running smooth. Every other month. I go September, I go November, I go January. Why go. was it important for you to build a school? At education, home. man, was I think is a key to everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You want the kids to know about things, they gotta educate them. You know? Um and education it's not like America where you just Go sign up to a public school and go for free. Over there, it's like it's very hard. Very few schools are considered public, which are called government schools. And even with those, kids have to pay for a uniform. They have to pay for lunch. They have to do pay for books. They can't even afford those things. And the government schools fills up really fast, and then right. they're overcrowded. So then there's a lot of kids that there's nowhere to go. There's no school. They're just hanging around with their mothers and selling stuff in the marketplace. And I felt like I had to do something about it. What is your school like? What What's the grades there? Does it well, go right from now, so eventually um, the, the the president, um, the last president, who's still current president, I think he's, he's done another year or two, he made senior high free, which is 10th, 11th, 12th grade, okay. free recently, which was very good. It helped out a lot of the kids. So my school is going to eventually be kindergarten to the ninth grade equivalent. Mm -hmm. So because those were, that's the point. Are you up and running money. now? It's up and running. Um, I was advised that you just open up a school and just fill up the school. It's gonna be a lot of it's gonna be a lot of pressure on me. So I was advised by an ex president of Ghana to let the kids grow there. Start them young. Start them like kindergarten to third grade, and third grade move to fourth. Then bring a new kindergarten, and then let it grow. That way you could at least budget it out because I'm paying for this out of my pocket. Damn, completely out of my pocket. But this is something I always wanted to do. I had to give back on my own. I heard that, but you, that's that's something, man. Where, and especially. People say, well, I made it. You got to make it, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, really, I'm I didn't feel like I made it till I did that. Really, like though? my mission is accomplished. I felt great. And it's, it's just the beginning. I want to do more schools, but it ain't cheap. So right. before I move on to the next school, I want to find maybe a company. Right, like right. So I'm going to take the bill. Yeah. The, Take the bill of this school. Let me go and spend another three, four hundred thousand dollars of my own money, build another school, find somebody else to like, take this bill from me. Right. Still Michael Blackson Academy. But like, let me find these companies and I'll, I'll give back. I'll promote you. Whatever I need to do, take this build away from me. Let me go build another one. You know? Hey, man, so yeah, you you look at it now. It's like, even when you do a comedy show, you're like, man, okay, I got to put this to the side. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. like, like, I got to go ahead and make this 100%. bread. You That's know, I, beautiful. How many students per uh, year? Right, well, every, so right now it's 100. Mm -hmm. Every year I'm at 20 so more hot. because I'm trying to keep the classes very thin. I have two teachers in each class. I want these kids to be special kids. Yeah, man. I want to grow future leaders. That's beautiful, bro. And you know, it's a trip, man. That's not the thing that get talked about the most. It's crazy what, what people want to bring up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you were sloppy drunk somewhere, yeah, or picture, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, then that, that would be the thing. You know what I'm saying? I think you probably got more about your relationship, you know, with the way that y'all get down than you building schools and putting these kids through schools. Yeah, you know what I'm it's saying? It's a great feeling, man. It's just it's something it, I felt like was my biggest accomplishment accomplishment ever. You mm. know, had a very big dilemma this week for the first time. You know, sometimes things you try. You know, the biggest thing happened this week. So my school, when I built the school, it was built for the less fortunate kids, kids mm. that cannot afford to go to school. You know, the schools in the village, there are still some successful people in the village. You know, there are still like the leaders, the pastors, the counting. The people are there. But when they heard about the school, uh, you know, a lot of people signed up for the school that could afford to go to school. That could wow. afford. So uh, this week, some big thing came out, and the management team that I hired, you know, sent letters to those parents like, hey, you know, um, the school was made for the less fortunate. Yeah, so man. if your kids could afford to go to school, you know, let's make room for those yeah. who cannot. So, be, you know, so she sent letters to like 20 families, right? And I just, all this happened in the last couple of days. And then they came back to me, and you know, I'm getting messages from like people from the village, like, "Hey, you know, I got a letter. They want to take my kid out." And then I and I told the manager, I said, "Listen, you know, some if they find a way through there somehow, you cannot kick the kid out. Damn. At the end of the day, we're still educating the kid. You know, uh, let it be the parents' decisions. And tell the parents, say, hey, listen, this school was built to help the less fortunate. If you could afford to put your kid in school, don't let the yeah, poor don't take kid, it from body, don't take from from some, from someone else. Yeah. And at the same time, too, I don't want just, I won't mind integrating poor kids with the rich kids. Mm -hmm. Let them learn from each other. I want that as well. But at the same time, I don't want money from nobody from the school. I don't want a penny. So what do I do? 
is really tricky. It all this happened to me today. Mm. So I'm deciding what do I do about because there's some kids in the school that could afford it. Like what do I do, you know, because I want this poorer kids to mix with the rich the kids at least no, not rich they, they, right. the parents have are working something else. have a little something let it mix up let it learn from each other you know but at the same time I don't want to take away from the, so right. I'm for somebody very, that should really be in there too yeah so Amen. that's my biggest challenge right now that I'm determined what do I do do I make the parents that has money maybe provide food for the school like go right. get a bag of rice so you dealing month. with this for real right, right now, now. Right. I just made a tweet today about it. And that's one of the things, too, where it's like, man, even if, even if it's not up to you, the uh, someone else, you should do the right thing. Yes. Because there's times, bro, <laughs> when I do like um like a charity event, we give away, you know, turkeys. With, and I'll see people online, and I'm like. With a Mercedes Benz getting a ch- turkey. You were there? No. I oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, man, they got it. You know, but yeah. God bless, if you feel like, but. But you know that if I have a limited number that you're really taking away from Brothers somebody me. that really need this. So There's true. a difference between, you know, you getting and you you getting over. Now now you're getting over. You're not right. getting something. You just getting over right. it. It's like you ever driving, you see a homeless guy out there begging for money, mm-hmm. and then you like you stay in the corner and watch this guy for eight hours. And eight hours later, this guy getting a Rolls Royce and yeah, drive man. off. Yeah, man. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Give me my eight dollars. Pull, pull back up on him. Like, 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 you know I saw you yesterday, right? That was me at the light blowing a horn next to you. You know what I'm saying? Because your, uh, your your Rolls Royce end up didn't come all the way up. So that was me <laughs> letting it be known. What did you do before comedy, Michael? Before oh, comedy started paying the bills? Uh, the last job I had, I worked part-time for the airlines. Mm-hmm. And I only took their jobs so I could get to my comedy shows. Right, right. So uh, <laughs> you know, I used yeah. them. They later fired me once they found out I was using them. Because right. these airline jobs, you're not allowed to use your benefit for personal gain. Really? Not at all. Man. So all this motherfucker going for the airline and flying around, when they catch you, they will fire you. I heard that. You can't that. use. Is that why you're so kind to people at the airlines? <laughs> like, you be shooting videos with them like, hey, everybody, come on in. Put me on your buddy pass. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get a, if I if I do get on somebody's buddy pass, I only can use that for vacation. Right. I can't use that to go to work. Damn. In fact, how I got fired, and the thing about it, you know, me, Africans, we always find a way. Like I, oh, yeah. I the job I got great medical, free free flights, not just for me, my mother, my whoever I was married to, my yeah. kids, they all get to fly for free. Why we let a job like that go? Yeah, hell I yeah. I could be a trillionaire. I'm going to still be there. <laughs> yes. even, still even, clocking in. Still clocking in. I'm like, hey, let, uh, maybe if I pay some guys here, just do my hours. I'm going to just clock in for a couple of hours. Be cool with the manager. And that's before 9-11. This is all before 9-11. You could, there's so much stuff you could do at the airline that you can't do now. Mm-hmm. So after 9-11, all that shit changed. I mean, back then when I worked in the U.S. Air, they're probably listening now. You can't refire me, motherfucker. I'm fired. I'm gone. Right, right, right. But at U.S. Air was back in, I worked there from 96 to 2001 or two. Damn. Right? And you were doing comedy at that time. I was doing time. comedy. Oh, yeah. That, because I, 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 right after 9-11 was when they had to, like, you know, the lost, airlines lost a lot of money. And they had to, like, they were looking for reasons to fire people. And somebody snitched on me. Somebody mm-hmm. said, hey, you know, because the White man in the office don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Right. He has no clue. You know, it's your own co-workers that know that you yeah. don't shows and, and they like you money. sure they're like, yeah, look and at this flyer. Right. Not only the flyer, these motherfuckers went on my website, mashed up my my shows with my flights. Oh, they did an investigation. Did an investigation. And then yeah, handed yeah. it to the people. Yeah, yeah, they, they right. like, hey, you they said, look, you supposed to be here. This, City of Brotherly Love, us. huh? Damn. Show me no brotherly <laughs> love. Yes. But it was all good. Sometimes, you know, we 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 too, we don't want to let things go. Somebody let things go. God has better plans for right, you. Right, right. You know? And then I'm, you fly, at the same time, you still flying standby. You might not get on a plane. And I was like, who cares? I ride first class everywhere I go. You know, you got to let things go sometimes to get bigger things. I heard that, man. Did you work at Domino's Pizza? Oh, that was before. Um, Domino's Pizza was my first job when I moved from moved to Philly. I worked there from age 15 years old all the way till uh, after high school. So you always work. I always work. So after high school, my initial plan was to go into service. The reason I went to go into service because I you know, you get paid, you get to travel, mm-hmm. you know, and you get to like I was I was trying to, you know, eventually be a citizen one day of America. And right, I'm like, right. this would probably help. Right. You know, I was trying to be an American. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately at that time when I got out of high school, I had a work permit and a legal visa to be in America. I just didn't have a green card. Mm-hmm. You can't go into service without a green card. So I couldn't go into service. So I'm like, well, I, and I didn't want to go to college because my mother need help. I got family, right. I you got family real back things. home that need money. Still, I had to work. So I just kept working on Domino's. I went, started from answering phones, 
to delivery guy to managing the store, you know, hiring and firing, did all that. And then that's when comedy actually started towards my last few months at the job. I started to put comedy ahead of my job. I remember going to New York one time to do uh, some audition, and I was the manager, and and, and my <laughs> set, I was the manager of Domino's Pizza. And the manager, the, my assistant manager, who was a came in that day while I was gone, never showed up to work. And that happened to be the same day the owners of Domino's popped up oh, to my store. Oh, man. Hey. Nobody there running the store, just the drivers doing their own thing. And then boom, and it was it, that one was owned. By, it was a franchise, so it wasn't like the corporate one. So they, when it's franchise, you could do whatever they want. They just mm-hmm. fired me. So, Damn. Yeah. So I got How fired. long were you working there? Oh, f- from fifteen to I was about oh. twenty one. Six <gasps> years. Damn. Can you still eat Domino's now? I love Domino's. Yeah, you can walk in now. Like, hey, I know how you make. But that. you know the thing about it, you know, and that's why I tell people, man, you could be successful in almost anything you do. Like, if I wasn't here as this comedian, you know. I probably would have like stuck at a Domino's and I would probably own myself three, four, five Domino's. I heard because that. most of those fast food places, you can't own it unless you work there. Mm-hmm. Right, That's right, the right. Rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to. So I qualified to own a few Domino's. And it's, they don't take too much to invest into them. The biggest investment is working there. Right, and you, you know? did that. And I did that. So actually, right now, if I want to go buy some Domino's pizza, I probably could. But Try again, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, where did my ninga and, and you know, I don't and say the N word too much. Yeah. And, and Mother Sucker. Sucker came from. Yes. All right. Mother Sucker happened and it was, uh, what, was, the, was, it, where was what state was I then? I forgot. I know I was doing like a 30 minute BT special. It was back then, they used to give out like 30 minute specials. A one, it was a one hour special that was shared with two comedians, mm-hmm. right? And um, it was, uh, I was going to do like, my first 30 minutes. And I remember I was backstage. Because when I used to go on stage, I used to say, motherfucker, motherfucker. I'm like, I can't sit out on BT. I, I'm backstage like, what the fuck am I going to replace this world with? Because almost Literally every before joke, you get announced. Right before I got announced. 30 minutes before I announced, I came out with mother sucker. I'm like, what can I replace motherfucker with? I can't say motherfucker. And almost at, after every joke, I always used to say motherfucker. So I'm like, motherfucker, mother sucker, mother sucker, mother sucker, mother sucker, mother sucker. Punk Beach, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I say it happened. It was uh, summer of like 98, I want to say, 98, 1999. And you go that's out and you introduce the world as far as w- as clean as you can, right. and that's the way it is. Yes. Hey, man, how much do you get that thrown back at you now? Like, people wait on that. Oh, uh, yes. I get on stage, the first thing I got to say when I get on stage. Yeah, is man. What I hear. My fans see me, they put their phone out. Hey, mother, mother sucker. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm off stage right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's got to be a beautiful thing that it you is. can't turn off. Nah, you can't. And you don't want to turn that off. You can't. I mean, that's what they know. That's what they're used to. And, you know, that's my money. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, the fans are my money. Without the fans, we ain't shit. What so. did you do during a pandemic when... When it wasn't, I noticed you increased your social, social media, media quite a bit more. Oh yeah, uh, I had, I, you know, I figured out a way, and I went on live and entertained the fans through live, you know, and I did a lot of very raunchy stuff like twerking Thursdays. And, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Between Tuesday. you and Tory Lanes, and, and oh yeah, but he's in jail, not me. I'm, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just, you know, I I wasn't shooting nobody in the foot. Yeah, that, that is true. That is true, man. And, and we got verses out of that. We got some good things out of the yeah, uh, we did out of the pandemic. So great, it was great. And I, I mean, overall, it, it was definitely bad. I lost a lot of money. Yeah, lost man. my best friend. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, man. Uh, I remember that. Lost time with my kids. Uh, it was, it was overall, it was bad. But you know what? It's bad things that make you tougher. And, yeah, man. And a greater person. Yeah, we had seen something that we never seen when it came yeah. to that pandemic, bro. And we didn't know how long we were going to be in uh, it. We didn't know at all. And it, it, as a comedian, I knew my job was involving audience. When it happened, yeah, I said to myself, "Oh my God, I'm fucked. Yeah. I'm not going to see an audience ever again." Right. That's what I thought. Yeah, because we didn't know how long it was going to be. We didn't know how long it was going to be. So I started, like, I made drastic decisions. You're like, man, I just bought this house. Mm. I made drastic (laughs) decisions. I started getting rid of things I didn't need. Yeah. So many bills I didn't need. I'm like, get rid of this. I had this one investment that I probably had, like, $200,000 invested in it. And if I canceled it, I'll lose half of it. But it was costing me $8,000 a month. I'm like, I'll lose half of it. Get rid of it. Damn. Because you don't know how long it's going to be. I remember Russell Russell Peters, uh, like, you know, I sold my house. And now he'd be like, man, I hate I sold my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm getting rid of watches and shit and cars. <laughs> yeah, but we just didn't know. We, did, we didn't know. And, and, and plus, man, with, with comedy, it's a, it's a give and take, man. You know what? I give you these jokes, man. I take that laughter in. You know what I'm saying? So, And, and we were like, and it got goofy, too. 
When they start trying to do it all online, it was so trash. Oh Oh, man, it was the worst. Yeah. And so here we are. This happened in March. March we got when I in March before the pandemic, I was on three tours. I was on the Wild and Out tour, Mm -hmm. on tour Mike Epps, and the Martin Lawrence tour. Damn. I was on three tours, man. I'm telling you, man, I don't know how much. I can't even discuss how much I made because I'm still on child support and the right. IRS is still listening <laughs> right. to me. But it was a lot of money that I lost in that whatever time. But I, I said, you know what? It's just part of life, man. You know? Yeah. So um, March, okay, I said, okay, this, we never going on stage. So then June, end of June, you know, my office manager called me. He said, hey, the comedy clubs are thinking about doing like 50% capacity, you know, social distance the audience if you want to come out. I that too, man. I'm like, man, I was just, I've never went four months without making money. Right. You know, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Right? And then I sat down and thought about it. I'm like, I said, nigga, I forgot my act. Wow. I forgot my act. Because you hadn't been sharpening that muscle. Heck no. People don't understand, man. It's like an athlete, man. Don't go play football for two weeks and try to go on that field. Yeah. Same thing with comedy. I Usually two weeks, you go on stage after not going on stage two weeks, you forget some things. You know, then you got to. And this is months. Four months, I was like, uh, I'm thinking, I'm. I said, yeah, let's go. And I thought about, it. I'm like, I don't know what to say. Plus, also a pandemic, so now you can't ignore the right, obvious. right, right, right. So now it's so even like, more. You got to come with something new yeah, as so well. Got to come something new, and then you got to revamp whatever you had. So I'm like, oh shit, I'm not ready. I said, give me thirty days. That's why I told him, give you me. You know what's crazy that you said, yeah. give me thirty days, as opposed to like, man, just get me out there. I just because you oh, know, no. I'm just gonna would. snatch the money up. Hell no. No, I don't. I, I don't. I don't show my audience. If I gotta give, I, I got. If I'm not give it right, I'm not going on stage. At I all. heard that. In fact, when I first started, I would have definitely been there. Like, what y'all want to hear? Is that you know, how's everybody no. doing? All right. <laughs> I'm the first when I first started, and in, in six months into comedy, I got my first gig in Philly, and I'm on going on stage and doing a show. They didn't like my performance. I didn't even stay around for the paycheck. I just left. Damn. I take that to heart. You know what I'm saying? I don't want the money if I'm not going to deliver. Period. I heard that. You know, um, so yes, yeah, so I was like, I'm not ready. And then even after the 30 days, I wrote some stuff down. And usually I go on the road with two comedians. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was like, okay, let me get a third comedian just in case, because as a headliner in the comedy clubs, you have to do 45 minutes to an hour. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm not sure how much, because this is the new shit I just wrote down. I didn't go try that in front of an audience. Right. I wrote them down. You know, I know my audience pretty well. I said to myself, okay, I think this would work. But me, I'm the type of comedian, I go, boom, fast, joke after joke. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? I go, joke after joke. I, Sometimes so I it can be three to four to somebody's one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, this one hour here could be 25 minutes. Right. So let me take an extra comedian just in case I can fulfill that 45 minutes to an hour. And exactly what I did. So with my first my uh, guinea pig weekend was <laughs> was a weekend in Memphis, Tennessee. So I went there that, first, that, that was my first time back after the pandemic. And I went up there and um, had three opening acts. And I, 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 I thought I had an hour material, but it ended up being like 28 minutes. Wow. Which was good because I had some guy fill up the time. And then a week later, by the time I, got, it, I was going to Dallas, by the time I got the dollars, I was back to 45 minutes. Hey, man, did it, you were at 50, 50% capacity? Did What's the that? laughter and the clapping sound hey, different? It was trash. You got mask on. You can't yeah, really man. hear the laughter that well. You know, oh, it, man. Was, it was it was yeah. Horrible. We did a virtual comedy show, oh, man, God, and I remember sitting there. I was like, I'll never do this again. And then we did one outside that was like people uh, parked in trucks. Yeah, I, went I, did, that, like, I did that at the at the uh, baseball stadium in Philly, man. where if you were in a car, if you do a joke, they honk the horn. Yeah, oh, oh, remember that? Yeah, I'm not, I'm like, yeah what man. The, what's yeah. the movie cost? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, what, well, we, we Lightning McQueen. Mother. We hearing you back and you back full force. Well, you, back you full back, force. You, you throttle now. I'm throttle. In fact, before going any further, let me apologize in advance because mm. every time people do interviews, they end up having to apologize later in life. Right, like a week later, I want to apologize to all this community. I'm apologize right now, motherfucker. Now let's go, punk bitch. Right, right, go. right. <laughs> hey, man. So, so now <laughs> you say you you back out there. You feeling good, man? Talk to me about the Michael Blackson show. We strike it, man. You know, we're Oh, you strike. can't. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> yeah, you know what? No, no, I'm just saying, you, are you sag? Yes, I am, you man. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's ah. it's so tough, you know what I mean? But, um, hey, man. And, and then I, I get a different kind of license that I can speak, mm-hmm. you know, from, from my after as well to sag and yeah. just being able to, this is my job. Right. But yeah, we've literally had people that's like, I got a project I got a pro- and can't, I can't talk, talk about, about it. it. But you know, because the strike is bigger than our project, right? Right? It's, right? It's a, it's a team effort. It's it's a, for everybody, right? You know, I can't be just selfish because I'm blessed with a show. Let me fuck everybody else. I can't do that. 
It's a it's a teamwork for yeah, every man. one of us trying to yeah. get what was due to us, and it's right, and they'll, they'll get it together. Yeah, man. We'll be back very soon. By Have you been out on the lines? Not yet, man. Oh man, I ain't oh, been on the lines. Dude, I've been man. doing. I've you been, been on the lines. I've been, do, yeah. I've been doing it online. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't online been in the line. line. I'm online. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm striking online. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. <laughs> hey, man. The last time you came to the neighborhood, man, we had a chance to speak about just uh, the love life. Is is yeah. it still kind of pretty much the same? Is it, it still a blessing? I mean, uh, I'm not a blessing. My bad. Is it, is it still? You know, we we going through ups and downs mm-hmm. with that. You know. Um, um, I mean, we still is still been an engagement. You know, we had a couple of breakups. You know, because it's I mean, it's not her. She's the perfect woman. I'm just got a problem, and you can recognize yeah. that. Yeah. Any, any therapist in here? Right, right. <laughs> no, man. Really, man. It's not therapists. We're envious. <laughs> you know, right? Like Jesus Christ. Hey, you know man. what? I mean, what more can you want? What more allow you to have one woman a month, once a month, and you, it's just not enough, man. Right. You know. So, so, it, so it's still. I'm just gonna get my dick cut off. Man. No, <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that but bro. still, in your relationship, you can have one outside experience a month, and, yeah. and that's not enough. Not enough. You know. All right, and man. then you know, uh, and then it's one... two cheating. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, we don't want you to cheat. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, sometimes you know you ever like cheat so much you just want to get caught. Like, just catch me, please. Man, who gonna say that? <laughs> <laughs> who gonna answer that, Michael Blackson? <laughs> you ever been cheating so much? Like, yeah, man, I have. <laughs> yeah, I was like, just, man, just catch please me. Please catch me. <laughs> yeah, really though. <laughs> hey, man, but but you found a queen that said go out and have one, and then that that's just like, man, you know, it's a restriction. You know, yeah. so you probably want two, you probably want three. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and what what's the rules to going out, picking up someone? Cause I know we ex- you explained well, this to me before. Yeah, it's, it's I mean we st- we st- it's still we still you know at one point I personally didn't feel comfortable with just going picking up strangers. Right. You know I mean these bitches I could rob you. Yeah, you know, hell yeah. Drug you. Hell yeah. You know next thing you know you 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 can't stand up. I had a buddy that like he he told me these he had these girls come over his place and they put something in his drink, eye drop whatever it was, and he pretty much temporarily paralyzed and they robbed him and left Damn. out. Yeah, so you know, I I'm not a big fan of some strange bad bitch in my crib. You know, I like to just stick with people that I know. Mm-hmm. I love that you talk about this. It's great. Sure? I'm living through you, <laughs> man, <laughs> man. I'm I'm living through. So so it happens at the house. Right. The, when when somebody come by, that's where you get down at. You get down at your property. Well, um, yeah, yeah. Or on the road, you know, on the road or at the property. Damn. Yeah. All right, not that I want to do this. I'm just asking. So, uh, just, just ask your wife, man. Yeah, Tell uh, her, call her, man. No, I ain't doing that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I'll be fucking around living with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm already nervous asking you these questions because she's going to think that I'm intrigued by it. You see, you see every man in here want to ask, but we like, yeah, man. We okay. Yeah, so so I'm I'm just playing like I have no. Come on, notes. man. You, your bills are paid, man. When the bills are paid, if you, like, if you was broke like this nigga, then right, it'd be yeah, a different yeah. story. Like, well, you know, Louis, Louis is broke. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know Louis was broke? Is it a look? I'm, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the uh, it's the outfit. Yeah. Right, 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 right. He just don't have that flair like he got yeah, some money. It's okay, huh? man. Don't worry it's about it. Hey, man, do you one you get or maybe not? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Blackson, do you get your clothes made yeah. every like specifically? I like to wear shit I know nobody gonna be wearing. None of y'all dress like me, are you? Nah, Hell not at no, all. You know? Nah. But yeah, I got man. different you people definitely, that make different you things. You definitely don't have an outfit on where people come in and be like, man, damn it, I'm wearing the same thing. <laughs> no. You know, like sometimes I see, I'm like, man, I know that's curtains. I know that's drapery <laughs> material. <laughs> I look at stuff, I'm like, man, where did he find? And he got the shoes to match it. <laughs> you know, when did you come around to like, man, I'm going to put on something that I know when I walk in the room, I'm special. Because I it, wait to see your outfit. Yeah, it, go, it goes way back. To like, you know, when I came to the States, when we Damn. had no money, we had no, my mother worked at McDonald's, made $50 a week to feed wow. us. Yes, back in, our first stomping ground was Newark, New Jersey. That's what happened in Jersey. Then we ended up living in a shelter home where I had to wear clothes that people give. Yeah, I know that. I go world. to school, kids made fun of me. You know, I remember the first day of school, my mother went, took me to school shopping to like McCrory's or Woolworth. You mm-hmm. got money? Yeah, that Woolworth, Woolworth. Hell Woolworth. Yeah. You know, me bought me like dress, cl- shirt, and like some. Church. My mom was in the church, so she bought me like a church shirt and a church pants, and then we'll go to the grocery store. We got she got my sneakers out of Pathmark. Oh, I remember that. 
It was, I mean, remember the bin that it was tied together? Yeah, it was tied together. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right next to the chicken. I was chicken <laughs> flavor sneakers. <laughs> yeah, man. For three years. Yeah. My first pair of sneakers, my second pair of sneakers was caught in action, but I was getting no action from right. the girls. Hey, man, do you remember food. winners? I'm See, my winners. I used oh, to wear winners, exactly. man. Winners were like Converse. Every loser that you wore winners, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that you got for like J.C. Penny. Like, oh, I got these winners on. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, so kids climb me a lot by my clothes. And when I was able, when I finally able to find a way to fit in, find out what it took for, and it was clothing. Mm -hmm. Kids just like kids with name brand clothes. Right. So I remember my first job before Domino's. I remember when I was in Jersey, I was like 14 years old. I got a job with this guy. He's coming to pick up a bunch of kids in the hood, mm -hmm. take us to the rich neighborhoods to sell candies. Yeah. And then oh, we yeah. lied to the white people, tell them that we're here. We're programmed. Staying yeah. out of program. Nigga, no, we wasn't. We're just getting this money for this yeah. pimp. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <We're like it's laughs> with a van full of kids. <laughs> Kid, <laughs> selling Kid candy bars for exactly. five times as much in front exactly. of the store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, you know I can go in here and buy that candy bar, bro. Like, what are right. you talking about? You know about? what I mean? We saw like peanut button up crustles, caramel. <laughs> yeah. All these pin of brittle, <laughs> make it breaking the fucking teeth for three dollars. And then out of every candy, out of every three dollars, I made seventy five cents. Mm -hmm. And I make like you know thirty, forty bucks a week. I gotta get my mom half, and I'll save half. For, I've been getting my mom money since I was fourteen, I and I always that. save half. And then I, and then by school time, I take all my halves, like two hundred something dollars, and I go shopping. And I might bought my first pair of Reebok, my first pair. Of, uh, Wrangler jeans and Lee jeans and mm -hmm. Lee shirt. And then when I started wearing name brand and the kids were like, oh, they started being nicer to me. Damn. You know? And then from there, I just kept going and going. And then just since that fashion been my thing, by the time I graduated high school, I was best dressed. And now you I went from worst dress to best dress. <laughs> and now you are, if you you like now a fashion icon. I just icon. wear what the fuck I wear. Hey, I'm man, just, but let me tell you, bro, there's times I can't wait. And I know even in your audience, People oh, yeah. can't wait to, to see, see what, what you're going to wear. wear. I just saw you over at Jason Lee's birthday party. And the first thing I did was see what you were wearing. What was that and wearing? I even looked. It, it was like oh, it was all one suit, color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I, and then when I looked down, I'm like, this dude got the shoes so, yeah. to that match. That outfit I had on had, was battery operated. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> really? Yeah, it, it lit up? Yeah, it, lit, it, it looked like it lit up, man. Yeah, right. if, I, if I put my electric bill, that, that check will go off. Hey, man, do, can you wear the same thing twice or you got to be careful? Definitely not in the same city. Right, but right, right. I, you know, the thing... And with social media, I too. I spent so much money. I spent a lot of money on clothes because I'm on stage. That stage is where it pays me all the money. Right, I right. I look good on that stage. I hate to see a headliner go on stage with a T-shirt on. I'm like, these people are paying money to come and see you, man. Yeah, man. When you look at me on stage, you're going to be like, you know what, man? That's where my damn money's going. That nigga's outfit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know like, I, mean? I kicked so, in. Uh, yeah, man, I, I chipped into this. Hey, and man, I remember there was a comedian named George Kirby, and George was like, yeah, the reason why I wear... Uh, tuxedos is because I want to look better than my audience. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he would come out and, and, and literally wear a suit or a tuxedo. Yeah, my fans look forward to what I'm going to wear on stage. Hell yeah. You know? Hell yeah. Have you ever had any of your luggage like lost or stolen? You know how um, when you get to the airport? Yeah, I don't, I'm not a big guy. That, that ch I don't check bags. I really? hate okay, to check bags. Okay, so you bags. bring everything with you. And, it, and fortunately for me, I have a, house, a home here. I have a home in the East Coast. I have a home, even in Ghana, I have a home. So I don't Oh, right, so you have, can just kind of get on everywhere. the plane. Just got to get on the plane with a carry-on. I have clothes almost everywhere. And then when I'm going, usually I'm going for three days. Right. I could squeeze all my shit in three days. I don't trust the airlines and my luggage. I carry my shit on. Hey man, and I make sure I board early so there's no run out of overhead space or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck right. you, motherfucker. Hey, man, do you ever get anybody that ask you for something that you're wearing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I've had that. I had where there's people that came to my house and want to go in my closet. I'm like, can I have this? And I've given stuff away. Yeah, give, you know, stuff hey, I, man, know I'm not, I won't wear. You know, we we'll see something sometimes, man. We're like, man, look at this dude wearing this Michael Blackson <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Like you can pull it off. You see somebody else? You're like, like man, like Michael Blackson got a suit line now. Or he got a clothing line. What the hell? Yeah, but you one of one, bro. I don't, I don't know how great a, 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 a Michael Blackson clothing line to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I switch it up. Like right now, I'm dressed like a, a damn African dictator. Yeah. But you look nice. Oh, uh, colonizer. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 you do wear it. You, wear it. you do wear it, man. Hey, Michael Blackson, like when I know you just did some shows out here mm -hmm. in LA. Yeah. You know, how good is it, man, to just kind of really be back out there, man? And when you didn't hear the laughter for a while, mm -hmm. do you still hear the laughter now, man? Like, can you do you still enjoy getting on oh, the yeah. stage? I love I love going yeah, on the stage. Man. I, love, I mean, it's just like my home, my comfort zone. 
you know, I'm before I go on stage and I heard you interview another comedian. Like, do you are you nervous before you go on stage? Yes, you, you know what I mean. But once I get on stage, and I'm home. Mm. You know, and this nervousness just that just keeps you humble. Like you know, and even sometime I would go to like a a, a night where it's just like a local open mic night, whatever they're doing, just to go try some shit out. Right. You know, like I stop at the comedy club on a Monday night. And I'm the type of person, man, I'm like, it's, it could be somebody in here seeing me for the first time. Right. And Give that first time impression makes it important, important. So, in, in fact, I might have the idea going up there just to try some new shit to see if it works or not. But I don't care what. I, every audience, I give them everything I have. If I'm going to throw some new jokes in, most likely I'm going to give them guaranteed jokes. And this person will go home and be like, damn, I saw, my, saw Michael Blacks and he was off the hook then. So, for some reason, when I see an audience, man, I give them everything I have. How do you stay out of the so-called comedy beefs, too? Because, you know... Stay Everybody, out. yeah. Well, I, I guess I ain't, I ain't had no beef in three months, motherfucker. Right, right, right. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> you know, and some of your beef is real. Some of it is like you know, yeah. you, you you know how to be light with yeah. it as well, man. But that comedy, man, that's like a you know, it's very territorial. Yeah. You know, it it could be cutthroat kind of thing, man. Like, how do you not make it so 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 personal for you? I mean, you know, would think with me, I'm a little different than everybody else. You know, um, I, I think some of most of the biggest problem that that's been the biggest comedy beef in the past was like comedians feel like somebody's taking their joke yeah, or whatever. Man. And my shit, man, you go say my shit, they're gonna know that's came from my Right, right, right. If somebody you come know. out saying motor sucker, I'm gonna be like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, like, no, I've been saying that since like uh eighty eight. <laughs> like, yeah, you do have a you do have a stamp on your comedy. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Man. And that's an important thing. And that's and, I mean that's what makes comedy unique. I think Every comedian, we all should be different in our own way. Mm -hmm. You know, that's everything. You know, everybody's different in their own way. Kev is a short motherfucker. Yeah, you said it. You know, cat wearing like a pimp with no hose. You said it. You know, <laughs> um, dark extra chocolate. Yes. You know, Chris Rock got teeth like he's born on Easter. Right. You know, everybody look fucked up in their own ways. <laughs> hey man, when we did see like the Will Smith slap, and we started people seeing people thinking they had the liberty to just jump on stage. Yeah. Around that moment, what were you thinking? First off, when you saw Will Smith and Chris Chris Rock, and, and not that we moved past it because they still, you know, but as a comedian, what did that make you feel like when you saw that as a comedian and mm -hmm. and, pop, and knowing both sides? Yeah, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And what I think, what I noticed, even I was there when Dave got jumped. Right. I was at the venue when it happened that night. Mm -hmm. I mean, Rihanna was there ASAP. Right? We saw that shit happen uh, in real time. You know, and that shit only happens in Hollywood, man. Y'all the only dumb motherfuckers doing that dumb shit over right. here. It won't happen like in Memphis and right. other places, you know. Um, I, well, at least we've never seen it happen. I know one time I know Corey argued with somebody on stage in DC before, but I think it was it just it was just a Hollywood thing, you know. And it's like I say, I, I've never had no situation like that. But right. be prepared, you right. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a my security looks like Shook Knight. Right, you know, right, six, right, eight, right. 330 pounds, you know. And then every club, we they had to beef up security just in case. Because right. a lot of time, it's just a bunch of, um, what do you call them things? That, like, when somebody sees somebody do something, they try to do it. Yeah, What's the it copycats. Called? Copycats. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then everybody now, man, it's this device, too. People want to be disruptive with because oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to record it. Exactly. I'm going to say something crazy, yeah. you know. So, but I took I took a folding chair on stage with me now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Folding chair is a new weapon. Now, yeah. Like, yeah, shout out to the white folding <laughs> chairs. You can't find one. You can't find it's one. Sold bro. out, yeah. motherfucker. Hell yeah, when you, hey man, when you, when you saw the Montgomery brawl, oh, <laughs> you goodness, know, Montgomery man. brawl. When you first saw that, what did you think you were watching? Uh, shucks, man. I remember my man Fuzzy <laughs> sent it to me, and I was like. I thought that I, I, thought was, I didn't know what was going on. I just yeah. a bunch of drunk people. Just something went wrong. I had no clue, and I'm still trying to figure it out. What happened? Yeah, I just murdered this one guy swimming. Yeah. And I'm oh like, man, <laughs> the dude swimming across the jumping to the yeah. fight. Just swimming already tires you out. Exactly. If I would have <laughs> swam to the fight, bro, as soon as I got out, you could have just knocked me out because I would have been out of breath, <laughs> or I would have had to wait like man. <laughs> And y'all would have been jumping in, and I would have just came in and got me like a little kick or something. You know what I'm saying? And usually just black for the people, ground. Black people came in and swim. I don't yeah, know how they would made it. You know what I'm saying? Know? He showed them. He Even the white people like, to save his homie. The white people on the boat were like, he ain't going to make it. Oh, my Lord, he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This boy is swimming. Yeah. But you know, the, 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 it was like it's good and bad what happened today, in my opinion. I mean, it was it showed unity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. And that's unity is always good. Hell yeah. You know, that you, you're not going to go just start some shit with one person. It's, it's unity, you know. <laughs> And at the same time, I hate to see when there's a race fight. Right, because bro. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to all come together. 
Right. You know, and it's would that would that ever happen? Right. Well, sometimes you do got to fuck some people up yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to teach them a lesson. Like, yeah, no, yeah. No, no. That, that, I think that night was and very. We were so very fortunate. No guns were pulled out. I know, man. You Hell know, because yeah. I'm not sure what kind of law Alabama has. You oh know, yeah, man. I'm not sure it's one of those Georgia, or Florida. I know, man. Laws. You, know, you can just carry. Text. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, yeah, man. Thank God that but didn't you, happen. It, it is easier to beat on some white dudes when they just have on shorts with no shirts. And you know what I'm saying? Like, you could just literally see that they didn't have nothing on them. So. Yeah, and you see that they was rushing them before they all got back to the boat. You know, you exactly. get to the boat, then it's, it's, it's game on. You know, that's why I was stuffing them out and beating people with chairs and everything before they got back to the boat. You know, believe that. Me, I do all my fights at nighttime. Turn the lights up and whoop all y'all ass. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, right. What the oh. fuck is going on? <laughs> what is going on it's here? It's called shadow boxing, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, do do you get women that tell you that you made dark, dark, dark skin real sexy? You know what? I, I'm glad you mentioned that because when I came to America, it was '80s. It was all about you know Elder Barge, Michael yeah, Jackson, yeah, fucking, Bleach and skin, uh, Prince. You know, wasn't I mean? Chris Chris Williams? Oh uh, man, yeah uh, man. I'll be sure. Yeah, it was tough for us. You know, black dark skin men were hiding in the bushes. Yeah, right. We didn't come out till. Uh, uh, Big Daddy came, came right, out. Right, 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 right. Big Daddy came out, came out, and then we slowly started coming out. I said, <laughs> can we come out now? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Big Daddy came. And then Wesley Snipes came out with New Jack City. Oh, man. We came out like, yes. <laughs> and then like, something, we here. And then something fucked us up and took us back. Who Flavor was Flav, motherfucker. That oh, man. Uh, Ugly motherfucker dark, took us back. Dark enough, but. <laughs> uh, funny looking motherfucker took us back. Three years. Now we had to wait for other dogs. <laughs> right. We had to, we had to <laughs> take us back three years. We had to wait for Morris Chestnut to come right. out. <laughs> then we came the fuck back out again. Hey man, I love how at one point you and Tyrese had the uh, the dark the dark the dark skin beef. You know what I'm saying? Was it Tyrese that kidnapped that, you? Yeah, he kidnapped yeah. me, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I had uh, I because I was one of the leaders of the dark skin committee. Yeah, man. Mm. And I and had you did a, it well I had, too. I had, a, I had to um, remove Tyrese when yeah. he was crying about the child support. Then we good now. He kidnapped me. Right. You know, had his dog trying to lick my ass. It was right. very scary. Hey man, <laughs> what the hell? Hey, man, when you said we had to, you know, because of crime, like, your, how would I say this, man? <laughs> your boundaries are crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because you are a comedian, bro, that it seemed like not too much is off limits. Not too much. And yeah. I think. Thank God, me being an African, it's just my excuse for everything. I know I'm some, just African. Please. Right, 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 right. Been here so for I'm, years. Yeah, they, I've been for me. But you know how to play, play your privilege in your my car. Privilege, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'm just an innocent boy from the village. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't gonna, know. They ain't gonna cancel me. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Hey man, for a dude that 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 builds schools in his in his country in his mm-hmm. village, you know what I'm saying? What kind of student were you? Like, did you know the did you know the value of education? Definitely, okay. man. Uh, and they think about it, that's why I had to build the school because kids in Africa, man, it's a privilege. We look forward to school, right? And I mean, whatever school you went to, that uniform was like your pride, you know. Um, and it was just a beautiful thing. I remember when I was went to school, I was I wake up in the morning early and put my uniform on, and I I went to school, you know. But my mother was an evangelist. My mother traveled a lot, so it would be times where I couldn't, you know, I'll go to school one year and I won't go another year because wow. she moved us around with her. And from kindergarten to probably eighth grade, I probably saw half of those grades. Mm. And fortunately for me, I was, I was, God made me smart because by the time I got to America, I think I was 13 years old and I knew 13 years old, you had to be in the eighth grade. So I was like, I, I, last school I went to Africa, I'm like, I need an eighth grade transcript. They be like, you gonna be make? I'll, I'll figure it out. Right. And I got there and I made it. I so before you came and got into the eighth grade, were you off like probably the seventh grade? Oh yeah. So the... I, remember, I remember first grade. I remember second grade. I remember third grade. Uh, never did fourth. Never did fifth. Wow. I did sixth. Never did seventh. And then I came to America and went to the eighth. Did the eighth grade and, 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 I, and was and able to get in. I was able to get in. You know, I, I mean, I you know the thing with with school, man, you just gotta pay attention. Right. All <laughs> these kids, they pay attention. Or everybody could have A's. Pay right. attention, and I pay attention. Do you trip off of how you say I will put on my uniform and school was like everything? And oh, then right. do you trip off of how school is not as valued? Yeah, certain I come times in certain places. Cut in class, can't wait to leave early. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? The school. We're coming to learn, so it could be something in the future. 
you know, but it is what it is. Man. Yeah, man. Well, congratulations to you, man. You and and stay mighty on, on what you do for not just for yourself, but for so many others, man. Yeah. Believe that. That's a, that's a hell of a thing, bro, to, to have. In a, and it's Michael, J- Michael, I'm about to say Michael, Michael Jackson. Michael Blackson Michael Academy. Blackson Academy. And, and hey, anybody willing, you know, I, I take all donations, you know, you know, take some pressure off me. Uh, MichaelBlacksonFoundation.org. I'm definitely you in make there. a donation, one dollar, whatever it is, everything will help. No, nah, I kick in too. Yeah. I appreciate it. And, and more than a dollar too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, more than man. a dollar. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's not say the power of a dollar because then he going to really put a dollar in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know he going to give a dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. <laughs> the movie was like, what? I'm building a school in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I got to take care of my own first. <laughs> Michael Blackson in the neighborhood, man. Thank you for coming Thank to the neighborhood, man. Much. Big Boy's neighborhood. Always fun, man. <laughs>